Welcome, this is Chris from Hazmat IQ, and welcome to this month's Chemical of the Month video for Above the Line, Below the Line, the Technician Series. This month, we're going to talk about 246 trinitrotoluene. So what are we going to need to talk about 246 trinitrotoluene? That sounds like a mouthful, huh? Yeah, I don't know if anybody's ever ran on it before, but we'll find out. Go ahead and grab your Hazmat IQ charts, the 2013 version is what we're using today, and I'm going to need my NIOSH book that I got in class. If, if you don't have either of those, remember, you can always contact us on the website and we can get you squared away. So, let's go back, let's start out at the base, let's start at chart 5, and let's revisit the four-step system and make sure we've got that underneath our belt before we go forward. So, step 1, we just want to predict, is it above or below the line? The reason we make that prediction is it allows us to predict how it's going to behave, above and below. Remember, just like class, we joke, just like male versus female, above versus below, we can focus on that. Remember, we focus on the first name, not last names. Step two, we're going to take the prediction we made in step one, we're going to look at it in step two, utilizing the NIOSH, the G3, tomes, Cameo, any of the other materials that are out there that you can use to verify. But for the purpose of today, let's use our NIOSH. And all I want to do is go into the NIOSH, look at those chemical and physical properties, and confirm what I predicted in step one. Step three in the system, meters and PPE. If you come from the fire service, it's pretty simple. We're going to wear our turnout gear and take all our meters. And when I look at the meter cockpit, you'll see some are listed in red, some are listed in green. Remember, the ones that are listed in red are red light meters. They measure a hazard that can kill me today. The green light meters, those are kind of more my forensics. They're the Quincy, they're the scientific CSI figuring out the whodunits but they don't have red lights because they're just measuring toxicity. I'm going to wear my turnout gear, I'm always wearing my SCBA, and I've got all my meters in the cockpit. I'm now a technician who can fly by instruments. Step four is, I'm going to go down range and I'm going to do either rescue or plumbing. And I will continue to go forward on the mission using the whole red light, green light principle until my meters tell me it's not safe. They see the hazards my eyes can't see. As I approach, how will I know if I'm in a radioactive environment? My meter will tell me. How will I know if that container is reacting? My temp gun will tell me. How will I know if I'm at 10% or greater of the LEL if I'm wearing turnout gear, 1% if I'm wearing plastic? My LEL CGI meter will tell me. How will I know if I'm in a corrosive gas atmosphere? My pH paper and my F paper will tell me. All right, so we utilize those tools as we respond to see the hazards our eyes can't see. So that's our four-step system overview. Size it up, verify what we predicted, meters in PPE, step four is mission. Red light, green light, rescue, plumbing. It's risk versus reward. I'll risk a lot to save a lot, I'll risk nothing to save nothing. Plumbing missions, I'm not risking my life or my crew's life for plumbing. For rescue, I'll risk my life to save a life. So let's do 246 trinitrotoluene. Right, when I get the chart two, right away as I look through the list. Do you see any numbers on the list? No. So when I hear things like 246, 241, 13, 113, cool. It's above the line. Look, we just covered isomers in five seconds. So if anybody's taking organic chemistry right now, I, you know, I just saved you a semester and probably $10 million, whatever college costs nowadays. But I predicted this is above the line. What does that prediction mean to me? I'm above the line. Gas, 300 feet. The vapors are heavier than air. It's going to have an LEL, it's going to have a UEL, it's going to have a flashpoint. It's flammable. It'll polymerize. It has an IP. I can see it with my PID. It's corrosive. I could expect to see my pH paper turn. It contains fluorine. I could expect to see my F paper turn. It's radioactive. It's toxic vapors measured in parts per million. It's air water reactive. That's my basic above the line size up. And when I look in the box on chart two, it's gonna tell me, continue on to chart three. So let's go ahead and let's go to chart three. And when I get to chart three, I'm gonna start in the upper left hand box, the flammable char clue box. I always start in that box and I look in there. Now the 246 trinitrotoluene. Don't worry about the numbers. We can leave those off for right now. Even dyes and tries, tri just means three of something, di means two of something. So if I put this thing down to bare bones, I'm running nitro 
toluene. Do I see any part of that name in the flammable char clue box? And when you look through there, make sure you look at the whole box and you're gonna see toluene in there. And since toluene's there, I'm gonna come down into the last names and I'm gonna look all the way down through there and I'm gonna see red 16 begins in nitro. So my play that I would call to my team, we're running red 16. I've just created a language that unifies all of the different hazmat response elements that are there. Everybody knows red 16 if they know the playbook. They check their playbook, what's red 16 mean for hazards? It's explosive, it's flammable, and it's toxic. So I went from having many hazards in my basic above the line size up, I was able to eliminate a lot of hazards now by knowing nitrotoluene. When I can progress through the chart from left to right, now I'm into the meters and I'm able to tweak some of this away. You'll notice there's no X for radiation, right? We're gonna predict, hey, this thing isn't radioactive. There's no X for corrosivity, so I can eliminate pH paper changes, I can eliminate F paper changes in my prediction. I've got an X for the temp gun. I have one for the CGI for flammability, PID, FID. Nothing in the Freon box, so again, what does that mean? No fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine is expected to be in play. They make a tube or a chip for that family, so therefore there's an X. There's nothing in the KI, because this is not an oxidizer. It's explosive, but it's, I'm not gonna get any hits with KI paper. When I look at the PPE column, remember, the big X represents our number one choice. The little X would be the choice if you didn't have turnout gear. When the hazards are explosive, flammable, and toxic, my number one choice, my turnout gear, my SCBA, and all my meters. If you're a responder that's not coming from the fire service, wear your multi-threat suit, wear your level B, wear what you have, but remember, your red light is, you're gonna get out at 1% of the LEL versus 10% of the LEL. Now I need to go to the book and verify what I just predicted in step two. Try nitro toluene, located on page 322 in your NIOSH. Now let's go ahead and flip to that, and we're gonna, we're gonna verify. All right, hopefully you're there. When we get there, we just work through that process. We predicted it was a gas. I look at the physical description, and it says it's a solid, crushed flakes. All right, so what does that mean to me? How do I change my prediction? Remember, these are the facts. I won't change my mind unless the facts change. The facts just changed. I'm gonna take gas 300 feet. I'm gonna make it a solid at 75 feet. Is this heavier than air? Yeah, it's a solid, but let's prove it scientifically. Molecular weight, 221. Let's prove it scientifically. Molecular weight, 227. So that's heavier than air. Air weighs 29. Remember, if you don't remember how much air weighs, check out chart six. It has the clues to the cheat sheet. We don't expect you to remember all that, right? Just know where to go to look. It's like the Google effect. So I've now said, this is a solid hosmo 75 feet. It's heavier than air. Does it have an LEL? I look down there, it's got a question mark. Question marks mean yes. All right, so I could anticipate, hey, I could get LEL readings off of this product. Does it polymerize? I look at my three spots where I can identify polymerization. Is there a P in the DOT box? No. Is there an equal sign on the formula? No. Is there anything in the incompatibilities and reactivities box after the word note that says anything about the word polymerize or polymerization? And the answer is no. Can I see this with my PID? I look at the IP, 10.59, close, but it's less than 10.6, so that works. I can see it with my PID. How about an FID? Look at the formula. Is there CH in the formula? Yes. So FID, yes. PID, yes. How about pH? Well, we already know by looking at chart three, we didn't see a, a blue or a red X for corrosivity, and we don't see a yellow X in, the, in that box. So we don't anticipate this is gonna be corrosive. Is it radioactive? I look up at the DOT box. I look for those radioactive clues, 161 through 166. This is 113, so this is not radioactive. Is it toxic? Remember, everything is toxic. Now we were initially above the line and we were predicting toxicity in parts per million, but because this is a solid, look at the IDLH box and you're gonna notice it's in milligrams per cubic meter. Again, remember, that's dust in the air. How do I protect myself from dust in the air? I wear my SCBA and cover my respiratory tract. Is it air or water reactive? I look down at the incompatibilities and reactivities box. 
and I don't see anything about air and water, right? Is this explosive? When I look up at the DOT box, I'm gonna see 113. 112, 113, 114, those are my explosive clues. Because if you haven't figured it out by now, 246 trinitrotoluene, look in the synonyms and trade names. This is TNT, right? So how do I safely and effectively respond to TNT? I utilize the Hazmat IQ system. We sized it up, we just verified it, now we're on to step three, what meters and PPE do I wear? I wear my SCBA, my turnout gear, I take all my meters with me. Step four, we're gonna go down range on 246 trinitrotoluene. We're gonna to continue to approach until our meters tell us it's not safe. We're always driven by our mission, and it's a risk-based response. I'll risk a lot to save a lot, I risk nothing to save nothing. Red light, green light, I'll continue to go forward. If I hit a red light, I'll stop and back out. If I see a victim, line of sight rescue, I can bust that red light, officer's discretion, and I can risk my life to save somebody else's life. Folks, that's it for this month's Hazmat IQ Chemical of the Month. Uh, hopefully you're practicing, hopefully you're staying current on the system, hopefully these videos help you in that, in that essence. Uh, if you need more information about Hazmat IQ or any of the other programs we offer, check us out online, check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, at we're at info at hazmatiq.com. You can send us an email and we'll get back to you. Other than that, till next month, this is Chris. I'm signing out. Be well and be safe.